Do you want to find out how monsters are made? Well, watch this video. I'm going to share my master plan for this year's monster chili plant. Last year, I grew a monster super hot chili plant in soil in a 160 liter pot. Now this year, one of my monster chili plants that I'm growing will be grown in soil, probably in the 160 liter pot, but that's for a later video and I'll share that with you as well. Today's video is about one of my other super hot monster chili plants, which we will be growing in hydroponics. My favorite method of hydroponics is ebb and flood or ebb and flow. Now, there are plenty of other methods out there, and I have tried out many of them, but I keep coming back to ebb and flood because it just seems to work best for chili pepper plants. If you're interested in some of the other methods like aeroponics, then go check out my good friend Peter Stanley. He has a fantastic channel on chili peppers as well, and he is a, a big supporter of the aeroponics side of things. He actually has some great homemade aeroponics systems. If you're interested in things like Cracky, which is a very simple way of growing hydroponically, and if you are starting out with hydroponics, that's probably the easiest, cheapest, and most accessible way to get involved with hydroponics, go check out Kangstar. He has some fantastic videos, some of the best videos out there on the Cracky system, and he has obviously modified a little bit because Cracky has some downfalls if you use the traditional Cracky method. But today we're talking about ebb and flood. I've built a few systems over the years. This system is not one I've done before. I thought I was being pretty unique with this, but there are some other systems out there that are very similar. In fact, I have a new building just next to this building. And inside there, in a future video, you're gonna see a big system that uses the same concept I'm gonna show you today. But let me show you how I'm gonna be doing things with this build. This is the pot size. Now this is pretty massive for this type of system. You wouldn't normally use a pot size this big, but if you want a monster chili plant, you need a monster pot size. This is 30 liters. It's an old chutney barrel. You can get these pretty cheap on eBay. It is food safe, so I'm not worried about having any effect on my chili plants. If I was building a normal system for this, I'd probably be using 10 liter or 12 liter buckets, same as the bucket size or the pot size that I use for my soil plants. That way I think it'll optimize the growth as well as allow for a lot of space for many more plants. If you're using 30 liter buckets, you need a lot of space and you're not gonna be able to have that many plants anyway. I'm gonna be putting an insert into here. The bucket's gonna go inside you. I'm gonna drill little holes in that bucket and that'll allow the water to flow out and also flow in. The hydrogen will be inside that inner bucket. Some of the other parts I'm using, again, all these parts are as cost effective as I could make them. So some of these things might seem a bit odd. Some of them you would have seen in previous videos. For example, the pumps I'm gonna be using. Now pumps can get quite expensive, especially for the flow rate that we need or that I would like with a system like this. I went with bilge pumps. These things are about 10 pounds, 12 pounds. And for example, this one here does 1100 gallons per hour, which is massive. To get a standard type of pump, to get that sort of flow rate, you'd pay a heck of a lot more money. So I got these, it is 12 volts, so I have to use a transformer. I have got a transformer that I'll be using. I'm not gonna have the pump connected to these 30 liter barrels. I'm going to be using a 60 liter barrel. When this floods, whatever level you get this to, that'll be the level that you'll get to on the 30 liter tanks. To control the flooding, number one, you need to obviously have flood intervals. So that's easy enough. We've got that sorted out with this little device again. Nice and cheap, it's got a small relay on there and that'll be able to control the pumps and I'll show you how that all wires together a little later. I decided to go with something pre-built because I just I did not have the time to go and code something up. I could very easily build something like this using an Arduino or ESP32 or something like that. But when you put together all the parts and you start wiring it all together, you realize that actually this works out a hell of a lot cheaper. So this here is a basic timing unit. Again, I'll leave a link down below. The timer is just to control when the flood cycle starts, how long it should flood for, and when it should drain again. However, you need to be able to control the levels of the nutrients inside the master bucket. To do that, I'm gonna be using a float switch. So these things here, you can get them pretty cheap. What's nice with these, instead of using, you get other little float switches that I have tried in the past. I find that these here are far more robust and they're adjustable. To do this effectively, I actually need two of these. One, to decide when the bucket is full. 
I have a second one that's going to see when the bucket is empty. It'll make a lot more sense once we have it all wired up. <laughs> There's one more thing that uh, is needed here and it's another bucket. Uh, this is a big one. Uh, 220 liter bucket. Now this is going to hold the nutrients. This is going to be what feeds the master bucket. The bigger the barrel, the better. If you have ever done hydroponics, you'll know that the bigger the mass of the nutrients and water, the easier it is to maintain the pH levels, things like that. The timer is set so that it should start pumping. We can hear the relay clicked in. You can see that it's filling up there and at the same time it is filling up in there as well and this tank. And you can see it's filling up pretty rapidly. Now bear in mind this will be full with quite a lot of hydrogen so it won't actually need as much water as we're going to be pumping in right now. However there is a small issue because this tank if this tank was full, it would be higher than that tank, which means that when the pump switches off, you're going to get a siphon effect, which is going to carry on pulling water and overflowing everything. I have a nice and easy solution for that. I had some spare uh, drain pipe and I just cut it to that level there. I will cut a hole in the lid over here and have this stick sticking up over there. And this pipe just slots in the top. Now you do have the same problem on the other side as well and that is it's kind of the opposite problem but still getting a siphon effect. If this hose that is coming out the master bucket if this hose is touching the water like this is right now then what's going to happen is when this pump switches off the water is going to start draining back and siphoning back from the reservoir into this and you're going to get overflowing as well. I will just Drill a hole there, make sure that the pipe sits above the water level, just like that, and then uh, we won't have that issue. This is my Dorset Naga plant that I'm going to be competing with Pepper Geek with. This looks like it's almost doubled in size since I put it in here a week ago. I'll put up on the screen what it looked like just before I potted it up. You can see the root system and also the foliage, but all that new growth up there is looking beautiful. Just what I want to see. There are some problems with the lower leaves, but I'm not entirely concerned with that. That's going to happen when you change over. I'm using different nutrients, different pH level. Uh, well, not too drastically different. If you, if you change your pH level too much when you're potting out your hydroponics plants, it very likely will kill them. But yeah, a little bit of a variance is not too much of a problem. You can see there is another plant over there. That is a seven pot Primo. And uh, we'll see how that one does. Again, that was a lot smaller just a week ago. Every three hours the system will flood. It takes about a minute to flood the system fully. It keeps it flooded for up to two minutes. Let me just reset it and you can see it actually flood. So that's going to flood the master barrel which floods pretty rapidly. And that will then flood the system as well. You should see it 
down the bottom there. So that's flooded fully and we can see the level. Yeah, it's about, about an inch and a half below the level of the hydrogen. And now you can hear it draining back out into the reservoir over here. Probably even more important than the system I've built is the nutrients that I'm going to use. Now, normally I use a three-part solution from General Hydroponics, but this year for this monster plant, I'm going to try and use this two-part solution. Now, this is something I've never used before. This is from a company called Atami, and uh, they sent this to me as a sample last year. I've been sitting on this for about a year planning this whole thing. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how it works. This is what's in the system right now. Yeah, go check these guys out. I'll leave a link down below for them. If I find that this isn't working the way I want it to, then I might switch back to the GHE. Take a look at the link on the screen if you want to see how I grew a seven foot tall Dorset Naga last year. Until the next video, thanks so much for watching and stay spicy.